All right, Bears fans, welcome back. Bear down, and away we go. This is going to be a fun one. It's one of the funnest ones I've put together. I really enjoyed this one. Two things happened recently. After the salary cap was announced and there was more salary cap space, a lot of fans asked, are you going to do another mock draft showing the salary cap change? Because I do involve free agency in my mock draft. So there's number one. Number two, after the mock draft I did where I pandered those who wanted me to draft a quarterback and trade Justin Fields, a couple of fans said, well, you didn't put this much trade scenarios into the ones where we keep Justin Fields. You could create some real magic if you did that with one of those. The reason I haven't done that as much is because it's not really realistic to know what Ryan Poles is going to do in his trades. Yeah, he will make some trades, but I decided to have that fun with this one. I decided to trade down a crazy amount of times, build as much capital as I could, put some real work into creating just a special team. And so that's what I've done on this one, and I'm really excited to show it to you. So here we go. Number one, here's the new salary cap. Uh, we have about $83 million after all the changes, but that actually can be a little bit more, and I'm going to show you why here. If you remember both Cody Whitehair and Eddie Jackson's cuts, right now they're being presumed that those are pre-6-1 trade or, I'm sorry, pre-6-1 releases. But the reality is teams can designate those to happen after post-6-1 for up to two players. So even though we've already announced we're cutting them, we actually can designate them for post-6-1 releases. So if you look over on the third aisle or third row over, post 6-1 release instead of that 4.104 on the top one there for this one would be Cody Whitehair it would be 3.002 this year and deferring 1.102 to next year the reason that's really possible to happen is because next year the salary cap is expected to be the biggest jump it's ever been in history it was expected to be 40 million well this year was expected to be 20 million and ended up being more like 30 million so next year's $40 million could be even higher if we continue to set record-breaking numbers. So I've got an extra $1 million there and an extra $1.59 million from Eddie Jackson's contract. That brings our new salary cap figure to $85,635,700, top left corner of your screen. That's what we're working with. And my favorite scenario is us trading with the commanders. 1-1 one, one, one is getting 1-2, 236, 240 and a future first round pick. With all that cap space, here's your new free agent class. I'm going big. We're getting Curtis Samuel. We're getting Chase Young on a one-year deal. The reason I did that is because he's gonna be doing a one-year deal to prove that this year wasn't a fluke with his injuries. He's been constantly injury-ridden. Obviously, he's got the relationship there with Montez Sweat. They played really well together, and he played well going from Washington and the 49ers. He didn't have a hard transition. I think he's going to be able to come in and play well. I haven't been the biggest advocate of getting a defensive end because Demarcus Walker has been playing really well with Demar with Montez Sweat there. But when you can bring someone in on a one-year prove-it type of contract, even a high-end player like Chase Young on a prove-it deal, one year, $15 million is what he's expected to get this year. It's a good situation for both especially when we're going to have additional first-round picks next year in a stacked defensive end class. All right, you'll see I also brought in Noah Fant for a t an experienced tight end to come along with Cole Komet and then Tyler Biedaz. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, to be honest with you, but he's a solid center out of the Cowboys, mid-level to upper level, so we're not sacrificing, but we can also draft one still in this scenario. All right, my new favorite scenario that I proposed out there, a lot of people disagree with it, but a couple of people have enjoyed seeing this one. I'm going to make it a little more clear for everyone. We've already paid him $3 million from his signing bonus. This is Justin Fields' restructure. We're going to take 2024, 2025, which is $22 million on the fifth-year option, and then take it 2026. We're going to sit him down and say, hey, Justin, we are building this team to be a championship contender. You've been with us, so we've built around you. We're putting the weapons in place. We're going to give you this year. We're going to give you your fifth-year extension. We're going to give you an additional year at $45 million plus. We're going to level them out so it makes our salary cap more favorable even though the salary cap next year is going to be 280 290 maybe even 300 million this helps the bears to be able to structure that to be very favorable for both justin fields and the bears to build this team to have a couple year window to see is this going to work is this going to be exactly what we want if it's not working out after this year and the next year if we're not winning playoff games under this scenario with this draft capital and this team 2026 is a stacked quarterback class. We draft a quarterback in that class. We can then trade Justin Fields if we need to in 2026, or we can have that quarterback develop underneath him, 
so many options when you do this six this fifth year option plus the sixth year. And so what we're doing, you take that six million you see that's for this year. We're gonna he's so he's already getting that. We're gonna add five million to it. So he's gonna get eleven million this year. Nice bonus for him. He enjoys it. We're gonna take a little off that twenty twenty six year to do that. We're gonna take a little off twenty twenty six and add it to the twenty two million fifth year option. And then we're gonna have a structured twenty twenty six that's very favorable to be able to be affordable while this team continues to rebuild and have a team in place to compete. All right, so here's our new salary cap. Break it down like you can pause here. What I do is I give Jalen Johnson an extension, four-year extension with $20.5 million per year. It ends up being an $82 million contract. Works for him, works for the Bears, gives him top-end cornerback uh, co compensation. He's happy. Justin Fields gets his extension. Chase Young gets a $15 million one-year option. Curtis Samuel gets three years, $9 million apiece. Noah Fant, three years, $8 million apiece. Uh, Tyler Biedaz, same thing, three years. Dylan Cole, we bring back on a league minimum contract. $19 million after free agency. $15 million is our draft pool uh, expected, but I, that would go up a little bit when you see what's going to happen here in the draft pool. We're going to get some more capital, but we're still $4 million above. We still have some wiggle room here, so it all works out. Tighter than Poles likes it to be, but, but hey, it works for our scenario. All right, let the craziness ensue. We're going to trade down from two to eight with the Falcons. We're going to get 243, their second round pick, their third round pick, a future first and a future second. Before you say that's crazy, there is going to be some, some desire for teams to come up for Jaden Daniels after Caleb Williams goes to the commanders at one. This is not an extreme overpay from eight to two. You have to look at the trade value chart, and this is actually well, well within reason for going all the way up from eight to number two overall to get Jaden Daniels. It works out. All right, so after trading all the way down to eight, the Bears are going to trade up to five. We want to get a star wide receiver. We don't want to miss out on those main three. The Chargers in, are in prime position to trade down because of their needs. So we're going to have to give up a little bit to get back up, but it's not as hard as going from 8 to 2. We're going from 8 to 5. So we are going to give up 8. We're going to give up our third round pick, our fifth round pick, and a future second round pick. It's an overpay by about 400 to 500 points, but it's worth it because now we are going to trade up, and we're not going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. He's going to end up going to the Cardinals at number 4. I did want to add some different players I don't normally do. So you're going to see that throughout this draft. I when I reanalyze everything, I just wanted to add some new players to give some more insight on some guys that you guys haven't been seeing a lot in my drafts. So with our 5th overall pick, we're going to take Romo Dunze. Something new to my mock drafts. I'm going to show you up at the top right corner. There's a highlight for each one of them. Romo Dunze 74.1% contested catch rate. High point he can go up and get anything. He can wrestle it away. Number one in college football last, last year in contested catches. He's big and tall, and he's, he's amazing. Nothing more we need to say about Romo Dunze because we've already said it. All right, now we're going to trade down from 9 to 16 with the Seahawks. We're going to trade just in position to still get Jackson Powers Johnson. We're going to get some of that draft capital back. We're really going to stack some draft capital on this one, guys. This one is a crazy mock draft. So we're going to get their third round pick and a future second round pick back. We traded away our own second round pick. And with that, I've already spilled the beans. But this guy is, if you want to talk generational talent, this is generational talent. In the top right hand corner there, look at his stats. It's not just one, one year. When we've talked about Jackson Powers Johnson not allowing any hurries on his quarterback, in 2023, he allowed one in 458 snaps. That's passing snaps alone. He also is an excellent, excellent run blocking uh, center. So one last this last year. The year before when we played guard, he only allowed two all year in 180. So one every 90 plays he allowed. And neither of those were sacks either. In his first year, he didn't start the whole year. He played, I think, don't quote me on this. You can look it back up if you want to. I think it's 100 snaps is what he played as, as a pass-blocking defender. Zero. Zero sacks hit in a hurry. So in his entire college football career, he has not allowed a sack and only three pressures total. It's unheard of. I'm, I'm seriously trying to go back. I'm back 10 years. I haven't found anybody, and I highly doubt I am going to find anybody that hasn't allowed a sack hit or hurry. Or, a, or at least a sack, and this few sack hit and hurries overall. 
it's phenomenal. Like this guy is truly unbelievable. I'm not shocked if he ends up going as the highest center ever, which would be right around the 10 to 11 range. It's if Ryan Poles takes him at number nine overall, I'm not shocked. I think people are going to start realizing how special he is. He is the center of the future. If not for the bears, for someone he is going to be. And the next guy, Zach Frazier is really good. He doesn't hold a candle to freaking Jackson powers. Johnson guys, he's special. All right, the Bears are going to acquire an additional first-round pick by trading up in this scenario. So now I'm going to use some draft capital, and I'm going to come up because, if you noticed, in free agency, I didn't grab safety. There's a guy that we have been targeting. We want to get him. He's still there. And there's a couple you can really hone in on, Cameron Kitchens and Tyler Newbin. So the Bears are going to successfully trade up with the Bills, who hold the 28th, or the, yeah, the 28th overall pick. Bears are going to have to give up their second round pick, 36, fourth round pick, and a future second round pick. This is an overpay as well, but to come up into the first round, you're going to have to do that to come up eight spots. And to do that, we're going to come up and get Tyler Newbin, safety out of Minnesota. I cannot tell you guys how, I know the word is overused. I shouldn't use it, but I'm going to use it. I shouldn't, I'm going to, I shouldn't, I'm going to, generational. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if he's truly generational. We can't overuse that word, but he had a special year. He really did. He had a 39.6 passer rating against him as a safety. That was bar none best in college football. He also had five interceptions and one forced fumble. He was a ball hawk, an ex excellent coverage. I mean, everything about him, That it was a special year. Cam Kittrens has had a couple of really good years, which is why most project him to go above Tyler Newbin. Nobody should be shocked if Tyler Newbin goes number one overall, especially if he balls out in the combine. Nobody should be shocked by that, but the Bears come up and get him. All right, the 40th pick, we are going to mix things up a little bit here. Normally, I've been picking Darius Robinson mostly because I've been so hot on him for so long. He's one of the first video videos that I made back around Thanksgiving. Uh, was on Darius Robinson. He's coming up the boards, and he's now projected ahead of Chop Robinson. And when some guys do that, some guys get pushed back that shouldn't be. Look at Dar or Chop Robinson's pass rush grade there, 100%. He has had an excellent year. Compared with last year, he had just as good a year. He was projected by many to go in the first round this year. I honestly can't see why he's not. A first-round prospect, especially with Jared Verse and Dallas Turner and Leatu Latu. He's had a really, really solid year. He has 5.69 sack hits or hurries. And when you have the reverse flip from the offensive side, that means once every five and a half plays, he's getting a sack hit or hurry, which is one of the best in all of college football. Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Leatu Latu, even Chris Braswell were just above him. Uh, let me actually read those two real quick. Let me get that. So Dallas Turner, 5.22. Jared Verse, 5.82. So that's a little below him. Uh, Leatu Latu, 4.9. Chris Braswell, 5.49. And he was 5.69. And he's projected to go a full round later. But then listen to this. Missed tackle percentage. Dallas Turner, 25%. Jared Verse, 21. Leatu Latu, 24. Chris Braswell, 10. Chop Robinson, 7.1. Is a defensive end, 7.1% missed tackle, and he had two forced fumbles as well. I'm really getting higher on Chop Robinson the more I look into him. I just don't know. I don't know why, but when I watched his tape, he he didn't blow me away on tape. So there's some things to be looked at here, and we have to try to really sort through it. I think the combine is going to help a lot with him, but his pass rush is really, really good. When he gets to the quarterback that often, 5.69, once every 5.69 plays, and he only has a missed tackle rate of 7.1. There's more to look in here with Chop Robinson, especially when he stacked up back-to-back -back years and he was projected to go first round. Maybe someone in the comments can, can help me sort this one out, but I am not positive why Chop Robinson is not a first-round draft prospect. Maybe it's because Leatu Latu had such an amazing year. Maybe the same with Dallas Turner and Jared Verse, that they were constantly at the top of the board. Chris Braswell came up. I just don't know. I don't, I don't know why he is behind Braylon Trice. Jonah Ellis, even by some people. Darius Robinson has now passed him up on most boards. So I don't know. I really think he could go higher than this, but if he's there at 40, 
I'm going to have the Bears selecting him in this mock draft. All right, also in this mock draft, I'm going to have the Bears, with all that draft pack capital that we have now picked up, I have the Bears picking a replacement for Braxton Jones. I do not dislike Braxton Jones, but Patrick Paul sitting here, he's right around a 50 prospect. Uh, that's where most think he will go. He, to me, he's got long arms. He's got a strong anchor. He's he's 6'7", and his pass blocking grade is 93. He only allows a sack hit or hurry every once every 42 plays. So it's one of the best in, in college football. There's others at, at the tackle. Tackle position is harder than the interior offensive line to have a better sack hit hurry rate. He is really, really growing on me. The only thing is... He's not got the strongest run blocking grade, but he doesn't have a bad run blocking grade, but it's not as good as some of the other ones. But I really like that protection. If we're really going to try to get Justin Fields that protection to let him get to his receivers and bring down those pressure rates, he's the highest pressured in all of the NFL. If we're going to do that, this is the type of move you make when you've picked up three second round picks. You, When we started with zero, now we had three. We're going to select Patrick Paul here with our 40, 43rd overall pick. And it's not something I've been hot on doing, but I really wanted to spice this one up, and here we go. All right, with the 75th pick, now we're going to pick. All right, we missed out on Marvin Harrison Jr., one Hall of Famer's son. We're going to pick the other Hall of Famer's son. We're getting Brennan Rice out of USC. Now, here's the interesting stat with him, and there's a couple of guys like this. And no, this isn't meant to be a slap on Caleb Williams, guys. I'm not bashing him here. But because you'll see some of the other receivers, too, have really good quarterbacks as well. That top number there, he has a 19-plus difference in passer rating with his quarterback. So to me, that stat is one that I kind of created. I don't know if it's out there somewhere else, but as I do my analysis, it's a number that I created. Uh, I didn't create the number, but a statistic that I created where you compare the quarterback's passer rating and then you compare the receiver's passer rating when he's targeted. And Brennan Rice makes Caleb Williams a better quarterback. He has a plus 19. So Caleb Williams' passer rating compared to Brennan Rice. So Caleb Williams' passer rating is 117.4. Brennan Rice's was 136.4. So it's plus 19. Other people in that category are also solid receivers. Uh, at number one, Lad McConkie, plus 25.6. Adonai Mitchell, plus 23.7. Sorry, Xavier Leggett was number one overall plus 27.2. Uh, other ones, Roman Wilson, even with J.J. McCarthy, as good a quarterback as he is, plus 21.4. So it doesn't necessarily mean there's a bad quarterback, but these receivers are so good, and that's a huge indicator for me that these receivers make their quarterbacks even better than they are. And it can mean that there's no other good receivers on the team. That's not necessarily true in this instance or in some of those other instances as well. Marvin Harrison Jr. also has a very high one, 11.5. Troy Franklin, 15.0. Devontae Walker, 14.2. And I do think Devontae Walker is that latter reason. He's really the only receiver on that team, really the only other option. Malachi Corley, 22.1 plus. Jalen McMillan, 21.4. All right, so I'm digressing. I'm giving you a bunch of receivers. But I do like that about Brennan Rice. He elevated his quarterback, and he's six foot two. Some said he was 6'3". It's looking like it's more like 6'2". But he has Hall of, Fame, Hall of Fame blood inside of him, too. And I do think that's a big deal. I think his dad, the coaching he's gotten, the mentality that comes along with that, I really think that's really strong. All right, so now we just picked at 75. We've got the 76 pick. We're going to build some more draft capital. This is a very polls type of thing to do. So we're going to trade down from 76 to the 86th overall. We out, then we'll, we'll also get with that a fourth rounder and a sixth rounder. These start getting into the rounds where the value isn't as high. The players aren't expected to make as much of an impact, but it is a quality pickup for us to move down eight spot or ten spots and pick up a fourth and a sixth rounder. And with that, there's a guy. Okay, so this next guy, he was projected to be a first round pick to start this year, and he hasn't had a real bad year. I'm not real sure every reason why he hasn't really stayed above the top of the boards but his run defense grade is low but he's had zero missed tackles all year now yes he's the same position as andrew billings uh i really think we're going to bring in another defensive tackle or draft one and mason smith is a big dude a big hole plugger and he can learn a lot behind andrew billings not be forced to come in on day one 
whatever reason he's fallen to the third round, we can use him as a third rounder where he doesn't have to start on day one, learn behind Andrew Billings, and really rotate in really nicely with Andrew Billings along with Gervon Dexter and Zach Pickens there on that line. I like those front four. It's a solid front four for us. No, we don't have the home run guy yet, but one of those guys in their sophomore year could develop, and if not next year, we could have some multiple first-round picks with everything we are trading down with Atlanta and Washington. All right, now you got a little sneak peek because I actually went too fast. But now we're going to trade up. We're, I'm all about, I've told you guys, the, the prime position to get players that are impact players are rounds one, two, and three. So now the Bears have a guy on their radar who hasn't been taken yet. He's a guy I love all the time, and we want to come up and get him. So we're going to have to give up a little bit. We're going to do a third and fourth round swap. We're going to give up our fourth rounder, but we're going to get their third and their fifth. And this is actually favoring them. I know it looks a little creative, but guys, this does favor Arizona. They get more value out of this. Third round picks are valuable. So we swap third and fourth, third and fourth. We get their fifth because that third round is very high value. And with that, we are going to pick Zach Zinter, guard out of Michigan. Ooh, I went too fast there. All right. Zach Zinter, guard out of Michigan. He has a 59.2 sack hit hurry rate as well. One of the best for guards. Uh, he did have the gruesome leg injury. He's going to be healed from that in time for the combine. He won't be participating in everything for the combine, especially drills like the 40-yard dash, things where he still needs to come back from. I don't know exactly what he's going to be doing. We'll find out real soon. But he is supposed to be fairly healed up at this point. He's not going to be all the way ready to be participating. I don't think he'll participate in anything, but I think he'll be there to talk and, and intermingle with the teams for sure. All right. So now... All right, here's the guy I haven't been used because I've been so hot on Cade Stover, but this is a very balanced tight end that I can see being a quality pick for us. 128th, is, he's expected to go a little beyond that. You always pick a guy before where he's supposed to go, but Ben Sennett is a, a, he's a stud at tight end. He's very balanced. He's a deep threat. He's an intermediate threat. He's a great receiving tight end, but he's also a great pass blocking and run blocking tight end. So I like Ben Sennett. Bring him in with Cole Komet and Noah Fant. You've got three tight ends. Your 12 personnel and 13 personnel. Those are going to be pretty stacked. Guys, this really is a fantasy mock draft that I'm creating here. But, hey, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to have fun for. All right, now we're going to pick, at 137th, we're going to pick the third string quarterback, Joe Milton. He's got a cannon for an arm. I've talked about him a lot. I won't go much more into him. But there's a lot of potential for quarterback coaches and offensive coordinators to work with him long term all right with our last pick that we got in our trade downs we're going to pick Katan Aladapo safety out of Oregon State the thing I like about him is he's versatile he can play strong safety he can play free safety he can also play slot corner he can come in in any type of pinch and he's solid he's a great defender he's a great tackler he's great at press he's he's really an overall package of a defensive back overall that you want to bring in for depth and i like that in our sixth round 202nd overall pick so i think this is a very quality uh, pickup for a sixth round pick here's our overall draft picks this is stacked i mean we got three first two seconds and three thirds in this draft by trading up and trading down and really when you have number one and number nine that's kind of the magic that you're looking for use that draft capital we had one and nine we ended up with five and sixteen but because of all that draft capital we picked up, we were able to come up into the first round, get another draft pick, and be able to build so much value. Out of six picks, we then turned it in to 11, and we have three first rounders next year. A second with the trade-ups and trade-down. We, we had to give away a couple seconds and give away our own third, but we've got three firsts and a second next year still. That's pretty freaking special. Plus, we have an additional second in the following year after that. All right, so here is our roster. Look at our roster, guys. And I added Darrington Evans in there. We didn't get a running back. We kind of thought we might in the draft. The draft doesn't always. So you're doing free agency before the draft. And then you can pick up guys afterwards. But this is stacked. We still have Khalil Herbert. We still have Roshan Johnson. And I like that. I didn't feel the need to go have to pick up another running back. Darrington Evans came in. He's now with Buffalo. But, I mean, that was until the end of the year. We can sign him just as much as Buffalo or anybody else can sign him. So we bring him in on a league minimum deal. He's still wanting to prove himself, and really, he can be the third option running back here. That's a good situation for him. So we got Justin Fields, Tyson Bajan, Joe Milton, the third, 
Cole Komet, Noah Fant, and Ben Sennett. Look at our offensive line. Jackson Powers Johnson and Tyler Bedaz. Tevin Jenkins, Zach Zinner, and Nate Davis. That's stacked. I like all five of those interior offensive linemen from a group where I liked one and a half of them last year. Like, that is stacked. On our tackles, we've got Darnell Wright and Patrick Paul. I don't see Patrick Paul starting the year, actually, as a rookie. Braxton would start, but I see Patrick Paul taking him over, which, you know, might be difficult for Braxton, but it's the NFL. You've got tough competition. Either one of them would be a great swing tackle. Larry Borum won't even see game time. He won't be on the on the roster that plays. He'll be on the 53-man, maybe. Uh, either way, he's expendable, but that's a stacked three guys there. Darnell Wright, Patrick Paul, Braxton Jones, and then our wide receiver room. All of you guys talking about, well, Justin Fields needs more weapons, which I agree. Now he's got his weapons. Cole Komet, Noah Fant, Ben Sinnott, but then on the wide receivers, DJ Moore, Romo Dunze, Curtis Samuel, Brennan Rice, with Tyler Scott and Valus Jones, and I really see Valus Jones getting more of those uh, play action, those sweeps, those 10-yard runs, uh, where he's already in action with 4.29 speed. This would be really fun. This is a fun offense to even just think about. Then on defense, look at that defensive line. Montez Sweat, and you already brought Chase Young in. You've got Demarcus Walker, who's a solid fill-in, but then Chop Robinson is a rookie who gets time to develop properly without being thrust in there day one. And you saw what kind of happened with Tyree um, freak, uh, Tyree Wilson. Uh, he didn't have the best start of the year, but he had a great second half of the year. So bring Chop Robinson in. Yeah, he's a high second-round pick, but we don't have to. We're finally in a position, guys, where we're taking players in the draft, and we're not thrusting them in to be in just to be out there and be slaughtered, kind of like Tyreek Stevenson was last year. His passer rating against him the first half of the year was over 120, 130. By the end of the year, it was down to 100 because the second half of the year, he was down to 60, 70, which he improved dramatically. Tyreek Stevenson is really, really doing well. But that first half of the year, he was getting murdered. To be able to bring guys in and not have to be forced into that, that's pretty fun. So in our secondary, we've extended Jalen Johnson. We've got Tyreek Stevenson, Kyler Gordon, Tyrell, Terrell Smith as a backup, Tyler Newbin now at free safety, Jaquan Brisker, Jalen Jones, Quindell Johnson, Katana Aladapo. That is a solid secondary. And then our linebackers don't change. Bring Cameron Lyons in to replace Patrick Scales. That's already a move that's kind of been made. We haven't replaced, replaced Patrick Scales yet, but we also haven't re-signed him. Who knows what's going to happen there. But this team is fun to think about. This would be my ideal. And obviously I want Marvin Harrison Jr., but thinking about different scenarios and way to do this, this turned out a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. This turned out to be really exciting. I if I end up with if we as the Bears end up with Romo Dunze over instead of Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm okay with that. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. will be better long run. But look at everything else we picked up in this because we trade down one more time. We got additional first rounders next year. We got additional second rounder, which we ended up picking up Patrick Paul, another tackle. This I mean that that offensive line is stacked. Those wide receivers stacked, tight end stacked. This is a dream team for me to think about. Let me know your guys' thoughts. This was actually really fun to put together, so I'm glad you guys kind of pushed me into it with the new salary cap, with the uh, scenarios of trying to trade down a lot more because you guys wanted to see that when I did it with drafting a quarterback. Now we did it without drafting a quarterback, and it was it was really neat. This is, this is fun. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you have a great weekend. We're really close to the combine. We're going to hear Matt Eberflus talk on Tuesday as they get ready to put the combine together. And right after that, the 29th here, we're going to be starting the combine off. This is That's just uh, five short days away from right now. So midweek next week, we're starting the combine. This is about to get really exciting. Then you're going to see the Bears announce that they've traded the number one pick. And the beginning of this mock draft goes into motion. And the Bears start this amazing historic offseason. All right. Till next time, if you haven't hit the like button, please do so. I really appreciate you doing it. It helps get things out to other people. If you haven't subscribed... I don't understand why you haven't by now, but just do it. I mean, it makes sense. And until next time, beard down like Matt Eberflus and bear down.